Hi everyone, my name is Yolanda. Welcome to this tutorial. And today I will be making an edible wine crate and wine bottle. Enjoy the tutorial. The first thing that you need to do is find yourself a bottle, either a wine bottle or one like this one. This one is a um, sparkling juice bottle. And this one is what I'm going to use to make the gum paste bottle. So first, I'm going to cover it with plastic. Once the bottle has been covered with plastic, using cornstarch does the entire bottle. Combine 80% gum paste and 20% fondant and tint it the color that you like, roll it out, and with that, we are going to cover the bottle. But the bottle will be covered only uh, halfway down. Now that we have covered the bottle, remove the excess with either a sharp blade or a pair of scissors. Cut all the way around. After you have cut off the excess, now we are going to let our bottle dry for at least 3 days. To make the panels for the crate look like wood, I have taken 5 portions of fondant, 2 of 3 ounces, 1 of 8 ounces, and 2 of 4 ounces. I'm going to tint them with brown and perhaps a couple of drops of black. If you want a light color, then you should tint your fondant with a lighter color. I'm looking for a semi-dark color. And here are all the pieces after I tinted them using the brown and the black. Now I'm going to arrange them alternating the shades. Uh, I'm going to take a dark shade and then a lighter shade and then another dark shade and then another lighter shade and so forth. Now I'm going to compress all the pieces together just like so. And I am going to roll them out, stretching them out into a long sausage or a snake. Um, I'm going to do this six or seven times. I'm going to roll it out, stretch it out, fold it, and do it again at least six times. And now here is my fondant to be rolled out to make the panels for the crate. The crate will have two panels, two long panels, 14 inches long and 4 inches high. Then two shorter panels measuring 7 inches long and 4 inches high. Those are the four panels that are going to be used to make our crate. So now I'm going to stretch and cut the panels. And here is my first panel. The only thing is I have to take one inch off from the height because I cut it five inches high instead of four. I'm going to fix this and then cut the rest of the panels 
34 inches high. Now I'm going to be working with the cap of the bottle. I chose this color for the cap to make contrast with the color of the bottle. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of fondant. This is fondant, by the way. I'm going to cut a small piece and place it over the um, gum paste using, of course, piping gel. the bottle already done. Okay and now to give the bottle a little shine I took some vanilla and I mixed in it with some luster dust and I also placed a piece of paper where the label is gonna go and I'm going to brush the bottle with this mixture just a few strokes I don't want to wet the bottle a lot with the mixture although the vanilla is going to evaporate but I just want to brush it a little bit on the top and also at the bottom very lightly now I'm going to let it dry Okay, so now I have a label that um, I had it printed at a local bakery. If you need to print the label or maybe a picture or a photo for let's say your cake and you don't have a printer that prints on edible paper, you can take your printing, whatever it is that you want to print it and you can take that to a bakery and you ask them to please print a, the, the label or the picture or the photo on edible paper. Um, you will have to pay for that of course, but if you don't have a printer that prints on edible paper, this is a way that you could get your stuff printed out on edible paper. So I customized this label using the name and a lot of information from the person that this is going to. Um, and so you can customize your own label. This is my own customization and uh, the name of the wine, I made that up to put it on the label. And I had it printed it out and now I'm going to put it to place it over the bottle. Just a word of advice uh, when you're using this paper. This paper is very uh, fragile and so do not press hard on it or else you will make dents and it, it'll rip, especially if you press hard. I'm going to be placing it over the bottle, on the bottle using piping gel. I'm using piping gel because the edible glue that is made with water and fondant is too watery and I'm afraid that the label might rip so I'm just using piping gel. I'm going to pick the, the label and place it on the bottle and I'm going to press down very very gently. After my label has been placed on the bottle, I am going to distress it a little bit because I want the label to look kind of old. So after I carefully and gently place it on the bottle, I will make some marks to distress it. But you do not have to do that. This is my choice. You could leave the label the same way you got it from the bakery. I'm 
reducing the label just a little bit. It's all for the bottle. It is finished. So here is the bottom of the cake. Here is um, the base where the bottle will be sitting. And I will explain to you what I did. I baked two 12 by 12 by 2 cakes. I then cut one cake in half making two pieces of six inches wide each for the length as you can see my bottle is a little bit longer than 12 inches or just about 12 inches and i wanted to make it 14 inches long so i took the other cake and cut two pieces of two inches long and I attached it to the pieces that were 12 inches long. So that means that now they are going to be, instead of 12 inches long, 14 inches long. So my cake in total is 6 inches wide, 14 inches long, and 2 to 3 inches high. This cake is going to be covered with meringue. You see the piece that I added, the small piece to the long piece? I am going to paste that using some of the icing, some of the meringue icing. Always do that when you are joining pieces of cakes together. Okay, so now I'm going to proceed with um, just frosting the cake the way I always do. As I started frosting my cake, I noticed that my meringue was kind of porous, so I had to stop um, the recording and re-whisk the meringue. And the reason that uh, I mentioned that is because um, I just want you to know that the conditions of the weather where you are uh, has to do a lot when you're making your icing, especially your meringue. The condition in my area has been very humid and that's why my meringue was not cooperating. But you can fix that by re-whisking your meringue or sometimes by adding some, some meringue powder. So everything is fine now and I'm just going to continue to cover my cake with the meringue. Okay, now that I finished covering my cake, I just want you to notice that I took some pieces of the fondant that I rolled out to make the panels for the crate and I placed them at the border of the cake board. And now I'm making some impression to give it the illusion that these are pieces of wood that have been nailed to the cake board. I will now attach all the panels to the cake. These panels take at least seven days to dry completely. I was not given that many days to make this cake and so I'm going to try my very best. If you want the, the panels to be rigid, you need to let it dry for at least seven days. And here is the last panel that I'm attaching to the cake. And now I'm detaching the gum paste bottle from the original bottle and I'm going to place it inside of the box very carefully. And here it is. And for wood chips like this here, we are going to toast some coconut flakes. Turn your oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit 
put your coconut flakes on a baking sheet and toast it toast the coconut flakes for about eight minutes stirring it every two minutes until it's golden sprinkle all around the bottle to prevent it from perhaps getting damaged during shipping well this has been all for today thank you for watching thank you for being here with me during this tutorial i hope that you enjoyed it I will see you back here next week with another tutorial. In the meantime, please share and subscribe to my channel for other tutorials like this. God bless you and I'll see you next time.